Okay. So as always, thank you everyone for joining us either live if possible or via a recording afterwards. Uh, we always appreciate y'all's time. Uh, thank you to the ISDs and the colleges who allowed us the privilege and opportunity to engage with your students either after school, during school, or in between. Uh, it's always exciting to work with them. Uh, and of course, today we have a really incredible guest speaker named Mr. Eric Herrera. Uh, thank you so much for sharing you know, some of your time today to discuss uh, taking initiative, uh, what entrepreneurship has looked like, and just things that you should consider as you look towards your career and your future. Um, uh, as always, we are we're excited to host these sessions through TILBM uh, and representing the Parchment Pathway Fellowship Program. And with that, we're going to go straight into the bio and go from there. So as I, as I had said to the guests prior to recording, we, we have a really exciting gentleman here today. I I cannot understate how cool he is. Um, Mr. Eric, I'm gonna read from the bio direct, that way students have a chance to just hear it if they can't see it too well. Uh, Mr. Eric Herrera is the founder and CEO of a biotechnology company called Maverick Bioworks, a firm that, work, that focuses on the development of cleaner and more efficient methods to extract lithium, rare earth elements, and other metals from hard rock deposits. Uh, prior to launching Maverick Bioworks, Eric worked with the United States Army Medical Research Institute of Chemical Defense through the Oak Ridge Institute for Science and Education uh, and studied at Washington and Lee University as a Levy Neuroscience Research Fellow, uh, earning his Bachelor of Science degree in Neuroscience and later his Master's degree through the Oak Ridge National Laboratory with the Department of Defense. Um, outside his entrepreneur, entrepreneurial work uh, as a business owner and synthetic biologist, Eric also serves in the Texas State Guard as a specialist, supporting field personnel through his medical and research background. Uh, and one thing I didn't get a chance to really add to that, uh, Eric is also a member with the Explorers Club. He was telling me a little bit about that a few days ago. And basically he had the opportunity to conduct research on the in the North Pole with a handful of other scientists from the US and Canada. So he's he's got a pretty rich background and it's we're, we're thrilled to have you, Eric. Thank you, happy to be here. And um, uh, can you guys hear me okay? Awesome. Sorry, I was just saying there is a, a, a massive hurricane. Uh, I'm in Boston, and we're about to get hit with a hurricane. So we're about to have 40 to 50 mile an hour winds. So great timing. Um, and hopefully the winds start kicking in as soon as we're done, and not before. Um, so yeah, thanks for the intro. Um, and I'd like to, to share my screen and put a little presentation together. Um, let's see. Uh, can you guys see it okay? Awesome. So, uh, yeah, so I think you guys did, uh, uh, you guys know who I am. Um, basically, I'm a total nerd, um, native Texan. I'm originally from Eagle Pass, Texas, um, and finally able to be back in Texas after being out studying and working for so long. Um, so I'm super happy to be back. Uh, total nerd. I'm a scientist. Uh, my other degree is in archaeology. I don't use it nearly as much as I should, but I love it. Um, and as Christian said, I'm also an explorer. I am a member of the Explorers Club and work with the Discovery Channel. So I've been on expeditions um, in the Ashanti region in Africa, in Ghana, uh, the North Pole. We actually went over the North Pole uh, the magnetic North Pole on a ship. So our compasses were actually facing south. That was north. Uh, that was awesome. Um, and right now we're planning another expedition to Oceania. Um, so Oceania is uh, north of uh, north of Australia, French Polynesia, Fiji, all those islands uh, for the 200th anniversary of Charles Darwin's uh, expedition where he went to the Galapagos. He actually, we got the same type of ship and we're uh, going all over the world with that same ship. And they invited a couple scientists on, on one of them. So love exploration. And on top of that, my day job is a, a biotech uh, CEO. So I, I do what I love. I go and work in the lab and create things that um, have never actually been created before. And I cannot underestimate how much I love that. Um, and I'm also a soldier. So um, I was sort of weird. I worked for both the, the army and the Navy and now I'm in the state guard. So, uh, so yeah, it's pretty, pretty ingrained. Uh, so what do I actually do all day? Um, basically we genetically engineer microbes to break down mineral orbs 
mineral ores and extract metals efficiently. So just how you put salt in water, we do that essentially with genetically modified bacteria. You can get a really hard stone like granite, put it in the bacteria in water, and it just completely dissolves. Um, so it extracts all of the um, metals as efficiently as possible. And right now it's super complicated the way they use it, super bad for the environment. Um, you actually have to heat them up in essentially a jet engine. It actually gets hotter than jet engine. It expands the crystal structure and that leaves you with a little bit of metal and a lot of waste. So we genetically modified enzymes to break apart the crystal structure by replacing um, essentially one silica atom with a water atom. So it's a, a pretty efficient process. And it's not new, but it sucks the way they've traditionally done it. 30% um, of copper, 15% of gold is already extracted with microbes, um, but it sucks. So four to five years, super expensive and not widely applicable, but the science is amazing. Uh, this picture is actually a picture of an experiment that our lab did. Uh, this is in the International Space Station. So the, the bright green is actually bacteria that's inside of a rock. Um, and it's slowly eating away at it. But how can we make it better? So this, this was a, a granite type of, of rock. And the bacteria is slowly eating away at it millimeter, millimeter a day, which is actually a lot compared to, to what happens in nature. But we were looking instead of days and weeks, can we bring it down to hours? So that's what I do in the lab. And I do that by traveling to the weirdest places on earth. Um, extremophiles are called the bacteria that grow in these areas. So this is Yellowstone. Um, finding those bacteria, finding those life forms, sometimes they're not even bacteria. Um, genetically profiling them. So taking the DNA out of the cells, sequencing it, and essentially using a supercomputer to tell us what this gene is, what it does, and how can we modify it to work for us. And essentially bring down costs of producing batteries, costs of producing wind turbines. Um, and that's what I do all day. So how did I go from chemical weapons to, uh, to essentially bacteria to dissolve rocks? Well, I, I as uh, Christian said, I used to work for the army. Um, if you guys have seen Oppenheimer, the movie, uh, where they built the, the atomic bomb, uh, that was my lab. Uh, so we did, we did a lot of weird, dangerous science, which is super cool. Um, and this is actually what chemical weapons look like. Um, that's a, a US penny, a regular penny. The last one is a lethal dose of, of chlorine. So that is to scale the amount that would kill a person. So we have to be very, very careful with how we handle them. And my job specifically was how can we break them down? How, how can we completely destroy them so that we can make them um, you know, safe or a place that has been exposed to these location uh, to these poisons, how can we make that habitable again? And this is actually what it looks like. That's the chemical structure. Um, VX is one of the most toxic ones, toxic compounds ever created. Um, and the the structure of the, it's an organic phos, organic phosphate. The phosphate essentially has four different groups coming out of it. Um, so one day I was just partying with friends in Washington, D.C., um, you know, hopping around bars. So that always helps. And I thought, well, we're already breaking this down with certain bacteria, certain enzymes that we're engineering in the lab. Can't we just engineer another one to break down silicates who have the exact same crystal structure, a central atom surrounded by four different atoms? And thought that was a cool idea. But wanted to see, is anyone else doing something similar? No, um, no one was doing anything like that. And I think that's not only how good science starts, but how good businesses start. So I decided to start a business. Um, this was my first lab in, in 2021. Uh, it was still during the pandemic. So I had unfortunately way too much free time. And I decided, why not? Let's start a lab. Let's start a business. Let's start a lab. Let's do cutting edge science even with limited funds. Um, so I, you know, scraped some money together and not the best looking lab, but lots and lots of science got done here. This is where it all started. And I loved it. I could not have been happier than working in that lab. Um, spent way too much time there though. Um, but ultimately it paid off. So that was in 2021. This is now. Um, 
we were able to buy a 10,000 square foot facility, uh, BSL-1 Labs. We have an army of scientists, engineers, geologists, all working together, and it's awesome. This was in about two and a half years. So it's we've been incredibly lucky to grow as, as fast as possible. And I we definitely got lucky, but it's not impossible. And that's sort of what I want to show you guys, that you can do this. You can take the risk and do something just awesome. Um, so lots of things happened in between. Um, we got into this incubator. And incubators, what they do is they help. Essentially, you have a great idea. Let's turn it into a business. And they teach you how to actually run a business. I'm a scientist. I, I don't know how to do payroll. I don't know what goes into running HR. I don't know financial instruments that investors use. So that is something they taught me. And I am super grateful for that opportunity. Um, and it's something that I very much uh, need now in my day job. Um, but other things happened. Um, so I risked it all. I, I quit my job with the military. Um, I gave up my, my army commission and my Navy commission, um, which meant I also had to give up medical school. So I, I gave up medical school. I dropped out uh, with a full scholarship. <laughs> Um, the hardest part was not telling the medical school. It was not telling the DOD. It was telling my parents that I had dropped out of medical school with a full scholarship. <laughs> they didn't take it the best way, <laughs> but I, I was taking a risk on myself. Um, so I moved out to Silicon Valley, um, established the first, uh, the second lab there and decided, yeah, this is 100% what I wanted to do. Um, you also get imposter syndrome. Um, I was there talking with the investors and I'm seeing PhD from MIT, um, Harvard business school, Yale, uh, worked in the best labs in the world to manage, I think one of them in just one account that they invest in was $12 billion. And they were analyzing whether they invest in me, not in my company, but in you as a person. I'm for 20, 24 at this point, um, I'm 25 now. Am I worth getting an investment that much? Am I worth like the millions that they're going to give me? No. Um, like what the hell is happening? Um, everyone has that and you, you shouldn't. Essentially, if people are willing to invest in you, you are worth being invested in. And that's something that I struggled with. Um, and it's very common. It'll happen in university. It'll happen in uh, new environments, in business, in investing, in banking. Everyone goes through it. It's natural. But you also have highs and you have lows. You make great scientific breakthroughs in the lab. You make investment breakthroughs. You get contracts. You hire people. Um, and then you get contracts that people pull out. Sometimes you might have to redo months of work because one tiny little thing was contaminated and you can't use that data. That feels awful. And all of this is part of the process. There's going to be risks. There's going to be highs. There's going to be lows. And it's it's a lot, but you really have to be prepared. You have to know exactly why you're there, why you're doing it. Um, and that's not just business. That's business. That's college. That's That's life. And I think that's something that I really should have been uh, something that's super important. And I would have loved someone to tell me when I was your age. So why did I do it? Um, as a little kid, I, I used to love Jimmy Neutron and Dexter's laboratory. Like I said, total nerd. Um, and Dexter essentially was, I'm sorry, Jimmy Neutron essentially had a lab in his house and just did the craziest experiments. So you know, I decided as a little kid, that's what I want to do with my life. I want to build my own lab and have amazing experiments, uh, you know, make gel come to life, make um, artificial networks of supercomputers that can design genetic molecules, um, make life that hasn't been seen on earth before. And that's what I'm doing. I was able to accomplish that goal. And that was really the, the, the driving force. I, I knew what I wanted and I said, well, F it. 
What do I have to lose? Let's try it. So what advice would I give my younger self? If there's anything you take from this um, presentation, um, Socrates was a, a philosopher in Greece. So a couple of thousand years ago. So if people are still sharing his advice, you know, it's good. Um, know thyself. Really get to know yourself. What are you good at? What are you bad at? What are you comfortable with yourself? What are you uncomfortable with yourself? What can you get better at? What do you need to change? All of that, you are stuck with yourself your entire life. You really have to understand who you are, what your motivations are, what drives you, and what you need help on. That is probably the single best piece of advice anyone's ever given me. And I really think it's super useful in absolutely every capacity. I also like quotes just because you can remember them super simply. Next one, um, invest in yourself to the point that it makes sense for someone else to invest in you. You are, in business specifically, and, and science, you really have to present not just the process, not just the the science, the invention, the, the product. It's a presentation of who you are as a person. You don't want to do business with someone you don't like. You don't want to do business with someone you don't trust. You don't want to do, as bad as it sounds, business with someone you think is uneducated. So you really have to invest in yourself and show the world why you're worth it and show yourself why you're worth it. If at any reason, it, you shouldn't do it for other people. You should really do it for you. You should know that you are investing in yourself. No matter what happens, you are now better than you were before as, as a person on the inside. And that feels good. Honestly, other people will start to notice. And you know that is probably the most important thing other than knowing yourself. And this can take a lot of ways. This can be, um, in my personal uh, opinion, it's probably education is number one. Strive for education, 100%. Make sure you, you do what you love, but you study what you love. You go to the best university you can. You become a total nerd for what you love. And it doesn't have to be science. It could be literally anything. Just as long as you do what you love and get really, really good at it. Then it's not work. Then it's literally passion. And that really changes the calculus of, um, you know, of how you live your life. And that's, I think that's really beautiful and really powerful. So yeah, invest in yourself. That is the number two piece of advice. And number three, future awaits those who have the courage to create it. Um, so I'm in Boston right now, um, looking up science, looking up scientists, um, trying to convince them to come back to Texas to work with us. And uh, Harvard was the dean of Harvard during one of the, uh, what do you call it, commencement ceremonies, which is graduation, um, was famous for saying, our graduates can get any job in any, any industry they, they want to. The <laughs> The graduation ceremony for MIT was a few days later. And the president of that university said, our graduate, our graduates don't find any job they want in industry. They create new industries. And that is awesome. That is where I think everyone should be, not just people who go to MIT, Harvard, uh, the biggest schools with the most money, uh, best connections. Anyone is able to do that. If you aren't comfortable with your options, create new options. Um, you're literally limited with your imagination. And I think that's beautiful. That's awesome. So there's also precedence for it. Um, for example, the actually the richest man on, arguably the richest man in history, uh, John D. Rockefeller, invented a whole new industry. He invented oil refinery. Those didn't exist before he came along. He found a niche, had the imagination imagination to create it, created it. And that's in business. What about in science? Well, what I'm doing has never been done before. 
we're essentially creating life that hasn't been seen before uh, using a supercomputer. Um, anything really is possible. Don't think about the money. Think about the passion. What do you want to do? You invest in yourself. You believe in yourself. You know yourself. What do you want to do? It's it's really that simple and that awesome that you can really just accomplish whatever you would like to accomplish. And I think that's that that's really awesome to have someone tell you. Only two teachers actually told me that growing up. Don't worry about it. Create whatever you want. And I wish more uh, more teachers had uh, had told me that. That would really have made a, a huge difference. So now I'm telling you guys. And what I wish on you going in. Nobody actually has it all figured out at all. No adults, no matter how professional we look, we literally are just winging it. Everything is a split moment decision guided by a central principle, of course, but um, yeah, it's it's really make it up as you go along. You're going to find other people who think like you and share your values. Um, growing up in a small, super small Texas town, not a lot of nerds. Um, I'm from Eagle Pass, Texas, if anyone, if any of you know it, uh, right on the border. Very small, um, sort of poor, but not a lot of people super into science and genetic engineering and exploration. Going to college, finding your community, finding your people, finding people that you can say, hey, do you want to go to North Pole together? Yeah, let's go. I think that's really powerful, and that's how you build a community. And don't worry, you will find other people who think like you. And that's really going to be just awesome. Um, and the last one is the only constant is change. You're going to have to get comfortable with change, and it's okay. It never stops, um, as well as death and taxes, but change is a better way to put it. Um, and yeah, that's uh, what I wanted to show, show you guys. So happy to start a, a discussion. If you have any questions, happy to uh, jump into it. Thank you again, by the way, for that. That was that was such a, I mean, as always, I'm inspired just by being in the room and what you shared, it, it gives me a lot to reflect on. Uh, so I appreciate that. For, for our classes, if you have the ability to turn on a mic, feel free to ask your question via mic. Uh, if it's more convenient, definitely put it in the chat. Um, and, and while the students are kind of, you know, getting their questions figured out uh, with their respective faculty and staff, uh, I'm just, I just want to reaffirm what Eric said, like building your future, it doesn't have to be an, ex an expensive endeavor. Um, if you're a middle schooler or high schooler and you want to be, I don't know, an engineer or a computer science business tech guy, you can start with baby steps. You know, if you're good at some software, why not go to the local senior center with your, your dad or your mom or a friend or a teacher and then just offer your services there, you know, it's small, but it gets the ball rolling. All right. So one of our questions that we just got in was, were there any specific biologists that inspired your journey? Uh, yeah. And actually, just to go off of what uh, Christian was saying, yes, it does. It There are way more opportunities now than there were when, when Christian and I were growing up. And I say this as we're old, we're only 25. <laughs> um, but Definitely go online, find education courses, find free courses, um, conferences. A lot of people don't realize conferences can be uh, subsidized. So they will actually pay for you if you're in high school to go to biotech conferences, to go to engineering conferences, to meet these people and meeting those people who share your same interests. And if you can get it paid for, um, if you're interested in bio, I know lots of great conferences that will do that, um, but anything can be done that way. Uh, so definitely don't worry about the money. There is, are very large companies that will actually pay pay you to to come meet them and to do work with them. Um, but yes, specific biologists who inspired my journey, uh, Dr. Jonas Salk, he invented the polio vaccine. Um, he was super, there really wasn't um, an efficient vaccine before it. So polio was a super horrible disease that, affected only children um, 
and it caused uh, infantile paralysis. And he was basically told, it's not, not going to work. You're doing it completely the wrong way. But he worked on it for years and um, eventually got it done. But he needed to test it out on people. He didn't have permission, so he tested it on, on himself first. He was so sure that he tested it and proved his hypothesis on himself. And after that, he tested it on his children. Um, he was so sure that he was able to essentially risk his own life and risk his children's life. And those children were the first to be immunized for polio. Um, and then the hard choice came. Every country on earth that can pay for it is going to want to pay for it. Do you patent it? And they asked him that and he said, no, can you patent the sun? Should you patent the sun? So he patented and sold it for $1. So every country on earth could develop polio vaccines essentially for free. And I think that's really inspirational. All that work, he could have made billions of dollars, but he chose to help people. So I think that's uh, it's inspirational. And what kept you going at your lowest? The fact that I knew that, um, that lows pass it's never going to be super low all the time. Something will always change. Change is constant. If you are at your lowest, it can only get better. Um, and it has to get better. It will. But seeing that light at the end of the tunnel, that nice, shiny lab to do your own science, to do your own research, uh, has always been my dream. I'm not just going to give up because I'm at my lowest. It will change. It will get better. Um, and that was the source of my inspiration, just passionate, doing something that I love. And I know that I'm going to have to raise money. I know that I'm going to have to do, don't do this. I spent like three days, like literal three days, 24 hours in the lab. Uh, lab smelled weird. I had my coffee delivered. Um, but that was probably my lowest point, getting those data points for the investors, showing, yes, this is real science. This is real legitimate biotech, you should trust a 24 year old. Um, that was a hard sell, but it was a sell that was able to do. So that's what kept me going. Um, have you ever questioned how smart you really are? Yeah, totally. Um, so um, I failed chemistry in college, completely failed it. I was, I think my unweighted average in high school was like a 99 point nine eight so high school is easy college is hard and it should be college is where you're told you're not as smart as you are and if you don't come out thinking like that you should have gone to a better college one that should uh challenge who you are and yes 100 percent. i flunked that class like not a d an f <laughs> and the professor just said like well learn it for next time uh, so I did, and I got really good at chemistry, and now I'm engineering chemistry with biology, but there's always going to be another chemistry class. There's always going to be another physics class. There's always going to be something that I have no idea what's happening, and it's an opportunity to learn, and that's also really fun. Um, you can't know everything. You're never going to be good at everything. Choose one thing you're good at um, and sort of appreciate that you will not be good at everything um it sucks but it's the reality uh as a 14 so as a 14 year old the way you can think of your career and life plan um number one know yourself what do you want to do what drives you what interests you if you had to spend four days just doing one thing what would it be? If you had to spend a lifetime doing one thing, what would it be? And remember, it's totally okay to change. I was gonna study medicine and then have a medical research laboratory. Um, it's no longer a medical research laboratory. Uh, now it's a biotech laboratory, but you can always change, but have a really good idea of what you want, what you 
care about what you're passionate about and start finding how you can get involved. Um, so in high school, I was doing research with University of Texas, uh, the Jackson School of Geoscience. Um, we were going on expeditions. Um, we did Florida, Arizona, West Virginia, and the Cascadia Mountain Range in Oregon. So I found on them and loved that. I knew that I loved exploration. I knew that I loved science and I found a way to make it work in, in high school. I actually went to my first one uh, freshman year, freshman year of high school. So there's definitely opportunities. Seek them out in absolutely whatever. If it's art, great. If it's science, awesome. Um, if it's business, definitely. Um, there, there are options. Uh, did you ever struggle with procrastination? Yes, <laughs> everyone does. Um, but I think it's just that discipline of, you guys should see what my calendar looks like right now. It's actually, let me show you guys. Um, you have to, uh, essentially start looking at, okay, this is free time. This is actual, like, I need to get to work. And having the discipline to really set time aside to get stuff done and remember to have fun, to chill, to party, it's totally okay. But really having the discipline to say, it's study time, I'm literally just going to study. Um, that really is how you solve procrastination. List out what you need to do. If you have time to relax, please relax. Don't think about anything else. If you have time to study, just study. But I find in my case, listing everything out, making a schedule that works super well for me. Um, how often while working in your lab did you learn something new? Um, that's the, the awesome part, like every week. Uh, when we were working in the army lab, we actually found out that, <laughs> so it was, my, my boss thought it was a mistake on my end. And I thought it was a mistake too the um essentially what we were doing is the enzyme breaks down the nerve agent by binding to it and bursting it apart and then it goes to another nerve agent and binds it bursts it um and what we measure is the burst up nerve agent the the nerve agent the degraded nerve agent was much much higher than it should have been like about ten thousand times higher um, so she thought, no, you just added more, uh, simple mistake. Don't worry about it. Re redo the experiment. I redid it. Same exact, um, result. She gives it to another student, same result. She's pissed off. She does it. <laughs> same result. Um, it took about three weeks to get into the lab. And then we found out the only explanation is quantum mechanics. So, uh, quantum mechanics is mechanics that can't be explained using classical chemistry or classical physics. And we think what happened was it bound to it and then it went through the actual matter. Um, it's only been observed a couple of times, but we now have evidence that that is 99% sure what's happening. So we found an entirely new quantum mechanics phenomena in biology, which is insane. That is so cool. We literally quantum teleported uh through matter awesome <laughs> um do you regret anything from your journey yeah yeah uh like i said total nerd i should have partied more <laughs> it's absolutely necessary to relax to have a good time i was in the library a lot um I don't regret being in the library. I regret not going out with friends so much. Not, uh, I, you know, I was in college. I was in a fraternity. It was fun. We had parties a lot. But I think really prioritizing that as well, prioritizing your own happiness, mental health, relaxation is super, super important. Just how you should make time for, uh, for studying, you have to make time for yourself. And that's equally important. So I'd say that is probably my biggest regret in the last couple of years. But 
regrets are, well, you can't really do anything with them. You can only learn from them. It shouldn't happen again, but yeah, it's basically it. Just learn from your regrets. Uh, any other questions? Eric, I want to know if y'all could use an extra deckhand on the Oceana expedition and if I could bring my scuba gear. <laughs> Please. Um, we are using deep sea rovers. Um, some of the, uh, some of the, uh, bacteria that we're gathering are extremophiles from deep sea thermal vents. Thermal vents. Yeah. So it's about 200 degrees C, uh, down by there and all covered in toxic, uh, gas. Not so, where I want to dive. No, uh, unfortunately. I'm thinking more Galapagos. <laughs> So unfortunately, I was I, that's the one I asked for, um, but I wasn't chosen. So uh, they're taking different scientists to different legs of the expedition. And I mean, I can't say I got unlucky, but I got sent to the French Polynesia. So not not bad at all. Um, have you ever questioned your passion? Yes, but not in the do I like science do I like being in a lab no it's more I also love venture capital I love the ecosystem of investors seeing the newest technology deciding yes this is awesome or this probably won't work um do I give up a little bit of science to go time on this that's really how I've questioned it do I have expanded interests and um, you know, questioning is, is normal, is normal, but I decided I am interested in, in venture capital, but I'm more interested in science. And one thing has to get done first before I split time into more things, um, which is actually the same thing as procrastination. Um, divided attention is procrastination and it doesn't really work out super well, uh, when you're doing something, something complicated, something that needs your full undivided attention. Um, how often do you get vacation days? <laughs> uh, not much. So um, that's part of the reason I like exploration so much. There was, um, we were working around 14 hour days, seven days a week in, in Silicon Valley, uh, talking with investors in the lab, just getting everything together. And then that's when I went to the North Pole. So for 10 days, zero, um, zero Wi-Fi, no cell connection, nothing. I just said, um, hey, I am out of the office. I'm in the North Pole. It can wait. And I think it's absolutely necessary to take one of those vacations just like once a year. Like whatever's happening, it can wait 10 days. It can wait seven days. I'll come back to it with refreshed mind and figure out what I'm going to do later. And yeah, I really do make that a priority. So um, last year I was in Mexico. This year I'm going to uh, French Polynesia. So that's work, but it's my vacation. Uh, was it worth the sacrifices you made to get to where you are now? Yeah, um, 100%. I'm, I'm living my dream. I have my lab. I'm doing the science that I've always wanted, financially stable. Um, so in the past year, we've gone from having, uh, which is really awesome, having $24 in the business account when we started to now having a valuation of $50 million. And that that was hard work. Um, and I'm, I'm really proud of that. Um, out of all the places you've lived and worked, what is your favorite? Washington, D.C. It's amazing. If you guys have a chance to go, there's so much history. There's so much technology. Um, I remember I was getting boba and my, my mom was visiting. So we went out to get Chinese food. And you know, we go out into the Chinese buffet. We come out and then I see a little plaque. And it's like, this is where the Lincoln assassination was planned. <laughs> um, and that's everywhere. That's all over D.C., it is amazing. It is super fun. Everyone's either, <laughs> this is really weird. Everyone's either like in their twenties 
or their 80s. There is no in between. Everyone's a student or a politician. So uh, imagine basically a town overrun by 20 year olds. It's really fun. Um, and then what was your degree plan? So <laughs> uh, I have two associates, three bachelors, one master's, and I was going to get my MD and then decide whether I wanted a PhD and then decided like, that's probably too much school. Like I'm probably never going to have to use all those degrees. Like I said, I'm also have a degree in archeology span that I don't use, but I loved getting. Um, but yeah, I decided probably doctor, not for me. And that's the best thing about education. If in 10, five, 10 years, I decide biotech isn't for me. I'm going to be older. Sure. I'm going to be 35, but there's absolutely nothing stopping me from going back to school and getting my medical degree. Um, and that's completely okay. Um, I had one family friend just finished law school. They are 67. It's totally okay to go back to school. And people don't really say that. Totally okay to it. And it is. So we have one last question and then we're going to start phasing it out. Um, we'll give me a sec. We have actually two, but I'm only going to flag one. Uh, give me a sec. I'm looking at which one. I'm going to go with the one that's more science related. Um, and then we can kind of start phasing out. So the freshman, and this is from uh, Krauss. The freshman just learned what enzymes are yesterday. If you have any other experience working with enzymes, could you share? Yeah, so all enzymes do are catalyze reactions. And um, a, a catalyst is not consumed, as you guys know, if you, if you pay attention to the lecture, <laughs> they're not cons consumed in the actual chemical reaction. So they just facilitate a chemical reaction. Um, you can actually engineer them to do whatever you want. And that is the awesome part of biotech. So I have friends who are engineering hydrolases that, you know, hydrolase, they hydrolyze a, um, a bond. So mine is a hydrolase. It breaks down rocks. There's a hydrolase that breaks down PET polyethylene terephthalate, which is um, like plastic water bottles um, and polyester to prevent microplastics. You could engineer them to create um, insulin in novel synthetic pathways. Uh, it's essentially, if you understand the chemistry, you can understand what you need to change with the enzyme to create it, but you can literally create almost anything you want. Um, so I, I have one enzyme that actually absorbs and transports um, uranium. That's never been done before. That's a completely, we, the, the term is new to nature. And it's essentially a little Franken enzyme that we evol evolved artificially in the lab um, about 9 million iterations over about 10,000 generations developed on a supercomputer. And that would have taken nature hundreds of millions of years to develop, and we developed it in a weekend. Literally just hit, <laughs> coded it and hit go on a Friday, came in Monday, and they're like, this is the, se the sequence. This is the DNA. Do you want us to print it? Sure. So, and... Enzymes, I think, are definitely the future in medicine, in biotech, in industrial tech. And they are super powerful because you can literally code them to do whatever you want. It's almost like computer code. If you know what you want, you can figure out how to do it with an enzyme. That's awesome. Well, as always, I mean, you know, it's... I mean, I'm speechless, like the content you shared, the wisdom you shared, it, it's incredible. Um, in a few moments, uh, I'm going to ask that you, you know, just final parting words, but real quick before the session ends and students start having to run to their next class. Um, for those of y'all who have not watched the recording of our orientation or, you know, are just tied up today and getting still squared away. So all of the stuff that you just learned from Eric, as well as our past guest speakers, can be found on the TILBM website in the library. So we have free books that are pretty useful. 
Uh, we have partner publications. And if you click here, you, you guys can get access to it. So, you know, if you want to rewatch Eric's presentation uh, and, and just kind of digest it more, you can find it here either today or as soon as we can get it on the website. Uh, additionally, you know, Eric brought up some really important intel on science, degrees, all of that. And, you know, even if you're a middle schooler or high schooler, you can get started now. If you want to be a medical student, if you want to be an attorney, you can start learning now. So if you go to TILBM's programs page, scroll down to our share drive, which is public, click on it, and boom. Oh, wait, that's the wrong one. Give me a sec. It's right here. It's this one. Click on that one. And boom, these are textbooks at the university level that tackle different degree plans. Uh, I know one of the teachers asked, what's a degree plan? If you wanna go into medical school, just click on this. You're gonna find the medical degree uh, textbooks you have to read at the university level. If you wanna go to business, uh, we have a great partnership with A&M Commerce and we have access to their business resources. Uh, if you wanna do poli-sci, you know, I was a poli-sci student, Therefore, we have a lot of easy access to those resources. And then again, if, if you want a more specific degree plan, just reach out to us and we can try to find something that matches your goals and objectives. Um, so I'm gonna stop sharing that. I'm oh, sorry, say it again? Yeah, if you're interested in neuroscience, anthropology, archeology, span hit me up. I can there you totally go, guys. So, I mean, you know, as we wrap up the session, Eric, do you have any, like, just, a last few words of advice, anything you, you feel you want to throw out there before we start kind of close shop? Yeah, I would say just those, those two main, just those two words from Socrates, just know yourself. I think that's probably the best advice I ever got. So sharing it with you guys. Sweet. I, I really appreciate it. We appreciate it. The ISDs appreciate it. Um, the community colleges that we serve, uh, I suspect they're going to really value it when I send them this recording. Um, and, you know, it's it's been always it's always a privilege to visit with you. Uh, and for the students real quick who might be wondering, how do you find mentors immediately in the immediate present? Um, Eric and I, I ran into Eric by pure chance at, at basic training. You know, I was like, so what are you going to do with the guard? Um, and he's like, well, I'm a neuroscientist. And I'm like, what? What? Because I, I was just starting my EMT program. And, and the truth of the matter is you guys can meet people anywhere if you're willing to get involved. So just do it. It's not that hard. You know, if you're going to join a science club at your high school, you know, why not just try to join the science club at the local university or community college? That way you're one tier above and you're meeting people that are one tier probably smarter than you. So uh, with that being said, uh, thank you again, Eric. This was incredible. Uh, we'll get that recording squared away in process and sent to you. Um, and yeah, no, I, I, we, I appreciate it. We, we really do appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Bye, guys. One, two, three. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks.